Hi, everybody, and welcome to DPS. Let's start off by trying to understand what we will cover today in the next 60 minutes. If you are a SQL user looking to explore the world of open source databases, especially MySQL, or if you're a MySQL user who is uh, currently having their server on premises in a VM or elsewhere, and you're trying to explore the hosting options on Azure, then this is the right session for you because that's exactly what we will cover. What is MySQL? Why MySQL? And how to get MySQL to work on Azure? Right. So uh, before we start, of course, we'll do a round of introductions. Um, and while we do that, I'd love to see uh, you all drop a hi or a hello on the chat window and introduce yourself as well. What you're doing currently and what you hope to take away from this session. So I'm Shreya Raital. I'm a program manager in Microsoft in the Azure database for MySQL and MariaDB team. And today I am joined by Sudish. Hey, Shreya. Thank, thank you for uh, inviting me uh, to this session. Right. I'm Sudish Narayan Swami. I work as a PM manager with Azure database for MySQL and MariaDB. My, my team works uh, to create an intuitive MySQL compatible databases fully managed databases, which is easy to operate and effortless to uh, use. Perfect. Thanks so much, Sudesh. And uh, for this session today, uh, we'll do a little bit of a role playing. Uh, so I'm going to take the role of uh, Azure SQL expert. So I'm an Azure SQL expert who has been actually working on SQL Server for a long time, and I have no clue about the open source databases world. Uh, and I'm trying to explore especially MySQL, and I'm reaching out to Sudesh, and Sudesh will play himself uh, in this session, an expert and a PM manager uh, for Azure Database for MySQL and MariaDB. So shall we get started, Sudesh? Yep, you're good. Great. So, hi, Sudesh. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, uh, as I must have introduced myself before, I am an expert in Azure SQL, and I'll be very honest when I say that. I've been working on SQL Server, Azure SQL for a long time now, and the rest of my peers and my clients look up to me as if I am an expert in all of Azure data, in fact. And recently, I've seen that Azure open source, actually, just open source databases have been gaining a lot of popularity. And everybody is reaching out to me, asking me, what is Azure doing in that space? What is it all about? And to be honest, I don't have any words. I don't know anything about that space. So I thought, uh, who best to reach out to than you, who is an expert in OSS databases? So I have a couple of questions, and I'd love to kind of ask you, and I'd love to hear more about it and learn about it today. So uh, I think the first, very first question being, uh, what is Microsoft doing and what are what is Microsoft's investment in the Azure open source world? What is it actually doing in open sources uh, databases? Right, that, that's a wonderful question, uh, Shia. And uh, of course, everybody would uh, have this in mind, right? When Microsoft says uh, Microsoft loves open source and Microsoft loves Linux, right? So of course, this, uh, this question will be there in most of the people's mind. So yeah. be before I uh, uh, take up the question on what Microsoft doing on open sources, let me uh, let me explain you being a P from, being from a PM world, right? On uh, with some few data points, why open source first, and then we probably can take up the second part of the question, what is Microsoft doing in this space, right? So we we will take it up in two different sections. To just give you an idea about what. Uh, 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 on certain data points, right? If you look at this, is uh, one of the data points from the Stack Overflow survey, which was just conducted a uh, few uh, uh, 2022, right? If you look at it, there are a lot of uh, uh, open source databases which you can see here, right? MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, uh, MariaDB, and even our MySQL server, Microsoft SQL Server, is also there, right? And uh, but if you look into it, the top ones, 46 percentage or 43 percentage, they're all the open source databases. This is uh, been uh, the responses are given by the developers, so they yeah. prefer to use these uh, databases. So this this actually shows the importance or uh, the uh, love uh, the developers have for the use of databases they want at the back end, right? Now, at another data poll, which I wanted to share with you is from the DB Engines database ranking. So here also you can see uh, most of the open source databases are there in the first five or first 10 list, right? So no doubt uh, people prefer and people love to use MySQL or uh, Postgres databases, which are open source. Now, there's an, another interesting uh, uh, 
uh, data which I wanted to share is related to the popularity of open source databases, right? So if you look at the last 10 years, uh, right, on what, what's happening in the database system world, right, the commercial uh, license are slowly getting dropped and open source license are uh, like increasing, right? Down like around 2021 around, you can see that it can go and it's predicted that it can still go up and people will love to use open source databases as compared to uh, the, uh, 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 the, uh, commercial licensed one, right? So that, that that's that's what actually uh, makes, uh, so these points are uh, enough for me now to answer your first question, why open source, right? And what is what what is it? Now let's, let's come to the second part of the question which you asked, right? On uh, what is Microsoft doing on this uh, space, right? So uh, in our database portfolio, Azure database portfolio, right? If you, if you see, we uh, have a general segregation between uh, the relational database and non-relational database. In the relational database, along with a SQL DB, SQL MI, or uh, uh, SQL on VM, we also have PostgreSQL, MySQL, and MariaDB databases, which are open source databases. In the non-relational uh, database space, if you see, we have Azure Cosmos DB, right? Uh, then MongoDB, Cassandra, and Gremlin. Right, we are uh, concentrating on these kinds of databases. So uh, this is where the complete data uh, portfolio is there, and this is where the investment uh, is being being made. The reason why we get into it, we wanted to make sure our customers have the flexibility to use whatever they want. Right, we don't want to actually force them to use a specific specific database when they are in Azure. Right, you want to use any databases, you are have the full freedom to use it. Right, and they they get all the benefits of Azure along with that. Perfect. And uh, I think this is a really good answer for me, uh, for my query as well. Uh, so many open source databases that are being supported by Azure, and it's really uh, motivating to see that. Most of my peers and colleagues are looking at MySQL particularly as a database that of their choice. And I wanted to actually take a step back and understand what is MySQL uh, and what are the top use cases? Why do customers uh, love it? Why do uh, customers use it? And also kind of understand the history behind why MySQL uh, originated. Interesting, like too many questions all yeah. uh, together, <laughs> right? So let me try uh, try to slowly answer it one after another, right? Now, uh, coming to the uh, history of uh, uh, the MySQL, which which you asked me, uh, it is kind of like uh, uh, two to three decades. It has been been the top most preferred database uh, in uh, for the developers, right? Now, why would be the question is the second thing which you had, right? It's it's a basic. The design principle of MySQL is uh, so good that. First of all, it's ACID compliance, which is kind of a must uh, yeah. requirement for any relational database, as you know, right? So that's there, right? And uh, and as, as I told you, like for any kind of an internet workloads or a, uh, for hosting websites, nothing better than this, right? So, uh, and it comes with, if you see open standards and it's an open source with a general public, uh, public licensing, right? So uh, the uh, if you look at the cost part of it, uh, you don't have to much worry about the commercial licensing uh, side of it, right? Now, feature-wise, feature sets-wise, right? Uh, the, it's very reliable. It is actually uh, uh, performative and uh, it is scalable as well, right? And the replication feature, especially callout, the, uh, the replication feature of MySQL is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, strong and it actually gives us an ability to do uh, the high availability backup restores, point in time restores, etc., with the help of the MySQL native replication. Now, another important catching point here is also is ability to use multiple storage engines. So, based on your requirement, you can have the same MySQL DBMS server as you can see in that uh, storage engine. You can have multiple storage engines being made. So, uh, certain storage engines are good for certain scenarios. Similarly, uh, and another storage engine will be good for another scenario. So, it also gives you the flexibility of using the storage engines the way you want, right? It, it, that flexibility is there. Uh, now, if you think about the programming languages which you are using and the interfaces with it, it's pretty easy and so are the tools, right? Whichever tools are using, um, they are all open source tools are available. You can easily connect. Similarly, whatever be the open source uh, 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 the programming languages, that's also, uh, we, we, are, we, we are able to connect to that. Right, so that that that's I would say the uh, uh, MySQL history of it. What was the next question? Sorry if I have missed anything on that. Yeah, I think uh, that was uh, the major part of my question. But again, you know, what uh, while developers love MySQL, that's where I was like really really focused on. This really gives me half of the answer for that for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, de- definitely. Because when I say that 46 percentage, definitely would have sp- uh, spot your mind why MySQL, yeah. especially developers love it, right? Yeah. Of course, I'll, I will come to that uh, particular point as like why yeah. uh, developers love MySQL, right? First particular part is the community support. Being used, it has a rich community support, right? Which means anything you have at out, you need a help, right? There is a community to support. If there is a bug, the uh, open source community is also very actively uh, uh, working on it, making sure that uh, the uh, anything what customer or, or the developers need to get their things done is faster implemented, right? So it, it, I would say that it, it's it's a happening place in uh, my, uh, the MySQL community uh, support world. Next is uh, basically on the uh, TCO part of it, where the cost is much less, as we spoke about the general public yeah. licenses in which it operates. So uh, the definitely cost cost factor is less. Now, the other thing is it's available with other cloud providers, like most of the cloud providers has MySQL. So it gives the flexibility for developers uh, to move or uh, get uh, get into a hybrid environment. So they don't have to think twice uh, when uh, what is there at the back end, right? Whatever they develop should be compatible uh, uh, at the uh, with the other uh, cloud providers as well, right? That's how we we also have it in Azure, right? So uh, that that's that's another thing which developers love. In at another thing is its ability uh, to handle the OLTP workloads or the as we spoke about the uh, the workloads like internet workloads like websites, mobile apps, gaming apps, etc. Right. So th- this uh, uh, this enriches its ability and it actually helps the developers to use that as a backend databases and get their things done. Right. With respect to uh, the, let it be with respect to availability or with respect to performance, they have the full freedom to do that. Uh, last but not the least, uh, it's a part of the LAMB stack. Or like LAMB stands for like Linux, Apache, MySQL, uh, and PHP, right? Yeah. So it, this this particular stack, it's a part of the LAMB stack. So uh, pe- people love to use by default uh, the uh, MySQL database at the backend. So these are a few of the reasons which I could uh, 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 could think about why what would be the reason of that 46 percent of the developers uh, sticking and just not one year. If you look at the last uh, few, uh, uh, even if you look at the Stack Overflow for the last three or four uh, years, uh, always MySQL has been uh, the uh, top oh, in the list. Yeah. Right? I think this is exactly what I was uh, looking uh, to understand because I completely, uh, you know, uh, understood why you know database administrators uh, perhaps love MySQL uh, for the sheer, you know, the replication, these kind of features that are quite unique to MySQL. But the effortless, uh, seamless connection that it has with other, uh, you know, development frameworks. And like you said, key part of LAMP stack, right? Almost all Linux, uh, Apache, uh, PHP kind of applications use MySQL and it just goes perfectly together. So uh, thank you so much for giving this really detailed explanation of what is MySQL, why MySQL, and what is the actual reason behind that growing uh, popularity of MySQL uh, database. Now, I think that brings to the next question and next part of uh, uh, what I had a query about is, MySQL on Azure, uh, I know that maybe perhaps we can have uh, MySQL hosted on a server in a VM, uh, but I also know that there is a fully managed MySQL service on Azure. And that's where I had most of my queries uh, as well. Uh, first thing being, what does it mean uh, when it's fully managed uh, MySQL on Azure? Is it no longer a community version? Uh, is Microsoft making its own version? Or is it just that you have the community version that you're hosting and giving it as a service to the customers? Uh, the question is uh, spot on, right? And uh, I, I'm quite sure that uh, definitely this question is like a very common question which people have in mind, right? Yeah. Uh, especially with the way you started with uh, the uh, IAS uh, offering, right? So MySQL, if you want, you can definitely host on uh, the uh, an, an VM, right? Uh, just similar to like we have uh, 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 SQL on VM, you can also install uh, the MySQL on VM, uh, the same community edition which is available, right, which, which will be supported in any VM, Windows VM or Linux VM based on the uh, operating step which you are choosing for the VM and then you can operate it, but that's that has to be managed by you. So we, that's why we call it as uh, IaaS, right, like infrastructure as a service. So where Microsoft provides you the infrastructure, uh, the platform side of it, you need to take care of it, right. Now, coming to fully managed uh, or uh, uh, fully managed database offering or pass which we generally call it as right platform as a service right which actually helps you to manage uh, the uh, databases 
uh, uh, and taking out the administrative effort, right? So that is a stitching what uh, basically Azure does, right? Uh, where, uh, when whenever we say manage, right? So MySQL comes with with built-in capabilities which we already discussed, right? Its ability to have a LAMP stack, part of a LAMP stack, like e-commerce uh, ability to support web apps, e-commerce apps, or gaming apps, right? So it, it comes with enriched features. Now over these capabilities, we are bringing the benefits of Azure. Right. Uh, when I say benefits of Azure, right, uh, using Azure, like for example, the ability to scale up or scale down, the security, the compliance, right, or uh, the intelligent performance, performance tuning for that matter to some extent, right, and uh, the ability to globally reach across, right. You don't have to worry about whether your server is uh, in uh, which part or which region, yeah. right. So that that global reach is there, right, and then. Um, and of course, the uh, Azure ecosystem integration, right? When I say Azure ecosystem integration, Azure has multiple services. And a, a being a, this a part of uh, the Azure ecosystem, this also being a part of ecosystem and the integration component in that, it makes the life easier for the developers uh, to forget about the administration part of it, right? Uh, the, that is like uh, the complete platform is in there for them, right? They just need to, uh, uh, I would say that, develop their schema, start writing to it, don't worry, bother about rest of the things, right? So yeah. they probably would do a query performance uh, checking and then uh, they do it. And uh, yeah. that, that way, uh, this uh, stitching helps. And this is what we do uh, uh, when I say we wanted to build a uh, uh, MySQL co uh, compatible uh, 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 the ma fully managed database, right? And we wanted to make it as I told at the starting, right? Uh, it, 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 it should be effortless to uh, ma manage and easy to use. So that, that, that that's what uh, we have it in our mind. Could you perhaps give me a little bit more on the features of MySQL, uh, what Azure Database for MySQL offers? A little bit, a little brief, and then we'll go into detail of each of these products. Right, right, definitely, yes, because see, uh, there is a lot which we do. We'll try. I try. will try to yeah. summarize. If we start talking about features, probably the, uh, to, uh, this duration might not be enough for us. But I'll try to just make it. Uh, uh, what is important for it? Right? Sure. First of all, uh, uh, this could also answer your other question on: Are we still using community edition? Yeah. Yes, we do use community edition. We are not changing it. There is no vendor locking, right? Uh, you, you, uh, you. Uh, the database which you are hosting is as compatible as equivalent to you installing uh, MySQL on IAS or on an. Uh, Server or, or an on-prem server, so that that that's uh, the first thing which uh, Azure Database for MySQL brings in, right? Uh, and uh, all the database tools or the development uh, uh, programs or programming uh, languages, right, are compatible with uh, the Azure Database for MySQL. Now, the ability to control, right, and scale up and scale down, right, and with built-in security, right. Now, what this means is, uh, though being a pass, so you know, generally when we say pass. Uh, there will be a restriction uh, to the service, right? And there are a lot which uh, which you could have easily done on an on-prem or an IAS server, which will not be there. So keeping in mind that we are managing that part of it, at the same time, we are giving flexibility for the customers to tune their uh, database services as they need. Now, when I say uh, tuning, like one of the examples I can take here is a server parameter, right? So server parameter, uh, like whoever has worked in MySQL very clearly knows that if I wanted to adjust certain things in the behavior of the engine, I need to play around with the config file, uh, my.cnf file, right, in, in general. So when it is a pass resource, you don't have access to the file system, right? Now, how do I edit that or how do I make these changes would be the first question which comes to uh, any developer or an, 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 a database admin, right? So that's where this server parameter helps, wherein it gives you the flexibility to change the server parameters and that ultimately will be applied to the engine and that will help you to make sure that whatever changes you need is being applied. So that's a maximum control, right, uh, with minimum risk, right, I would say, right, that is where it will help, right. But regarding the scalability, uh, you always have an uh, ability to scale up or down. Right now, the question would be, why do we have to do that? Right. So, uh, depending upon the type of application or type of the workloads which you are having, right, there are certain seasons where you might have uh, more uh, workloads coming in. There are certain, uh, like I would say, the holiday season or something where you would like to have uh, lesser resources being utilized. Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's a cost saving part as well. When you say scale up, scale down, that's one use case scenario which I can speak uh, speak about. Uh, another thing is like all of a sudden your company. 
uh, had started getting more customers and the application yeah. workload increases, right? And then you wanted to scale up. Uh, it's it's a nightmare in case of a non-profit, yeah. right? Uh, Otherwise, uh, I would have had to buy and sell off resources when I don't need uh, them. That's absolutely very, like, difficult very, to do. Completely understand. Yeah. Very true. And uh, even the IOPS for that matter, right? The uh, the uh, IOPS control of the storage is can, can also be adjusted. So that uh, that is it. Now, when I say built-in security, like uh, where you're placing the servers is secured, we'll, we'll speak about it a little more in detail later, right? Um, uh, if time permits, right? Uh, and then uh, also uh, the uh, what it in, uh, builds is uh, uh, ability to isolate the traffic which is coming to the server, right? Uh, and then uh, also... The compliance part of it, when I say compliance part of it, uh, or related to the co compliance offerings like ISO or HIPAA certifications, right, which is also being taken care of by Microsoft. Hmm. Now, coming to another is uh, it's highly available, right? If you and uh, performance, these are the two things which any uh, database admin will ask for, right? Uh, is your service uh, uh, resilient and highly available, right? Yeah. And uh, can I can I make sure that I have uh, performance, uh, I would say committed performance all the time, right? Yeah. So th that's another thing which uh, we very uh, highly concentrate on and with zero redundant uh, high availability options uh, uh, the uh, across the zones, right? And also uh, making sure that uh, the, uh, the highest, uh, the engine is tuned to such a way that it can give the highest performance. You are always assured about the best uh, response from the tire which you select, right? Uh, now, coming to the innovative uh, building apps, right? So this is what we talked about the ecosystem, Azure ecosystem, right? Like yeah. we have AKS, Azure apps, service apps, et cetera, right? And you have you can easily integrate uh, with these uh, uh, th these services, which is there in Azure, right? And uh, the, uh, the integration is seamless, I would say, right? As compared yeah. to uh, uh, like if you, are, uh, if you are doing it from an on-prem and then trying to uh, integrate these kinds of services. So this, this this in general, like I would say that uh, uh, rather I would not call it as a feature list, but uh, these are the things which MySQL provides and uh, uh, which which should actually uh, like uh, give a feeling to you that yes, I need to use MySQL for right. Right. No, I absolutely uh, relate this with the uh, when when I was trying to move to Azure SQL DB and Azure SQL MI, and uh, these are exactly the points, right? Like control, uh, scalability, uh, security, and. Uh, like you said, performance and high availability, non-negotiable, right? And then uh, the last one that you mentioned, just that seamless integration with Azure, right? Whatever compute services I want to use, whatever other services uh, I want to integrate with, it is just very simple and seamless. So it's great to see that Azure Database for MySQL also has similar, uh, you know, a seamless in integration with the rest of the Azure ecosystem there. Now, actually, uh, you know, when I thought about Azure SQL, SQL MI, uh, I got me thinking, do we have something similar for Azure Database for MySQL as well, uh, like we have for Azure SQL DB and SQL MI? Yeah, uh, uh, I, I would uh, like to start this question and talking about the offerings what we have, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, explaining about uh, the uh, what MI or SQL, uh, this thing, right? So generally, we have two different uh, deployment types. One is a flexible, which we reckon, which is the new one where our whole investment is in. Right, and this uh, the older or the legacy ones are the single server architecture. Now, if I, if you if you look at the uh, single server architecture, they are more like the Azure SQL architecture, right? And uh, uh, flexible, I will compare. It's not the same architecture. Let me be very uh, clear here, but it's a similar architecture. Is what the flexible server is, uh, wherein um, um, it will help the customers to seamless migrate without much changes, right? to the flexible server. So I would say that around uh, four years back, uh, uh, we we started with uh, uh, supporting open source databases on Azure, right? We came out initially with a single server offering, right? We learned from the customers, their problems, their difficulties, their feedbacks, right? Uh, uh, we incorporated that, right? Along with, uh, in terms of high performance, uh, in, in terms of availability, et cetera. And then we designed a new architecture for the customer, right? That's what the flexible server architecture is. And as, as the name suggests, it makes it flexible, so near to your IAS offering, right? But still managed, right? Which would mean like it is so equal to running your MySQL uh, community edition on a VM, right? But at the same time, it is completely managed by Microsoft, right? So it's a fully managed 
uh, by Microsoft. So if you look at here, this architecture, it's we uh, we have separated compute and uh, storage, right? Now compute is a Linux VM running where you have the MySQL server hosted, right? And we have the storage uh, which is decoupled from the compute. And we uh, we put that uh, data and log files on the Azure Premium Storage, right? Uh, and uh, it, uh, that uh, that actually uh, the three copies of this uh, database log files will be preserved. So anything which is happening uh, to the uh, storage will be taken care of. Like suppose if you have a disk failure or something, we will spin up another uh, storage account and then make sure that this has been uh, that we always maintain at any point of time we maintain, right? Now, if you think about the compute for that matter, it is, uh, as I told you, like it's a Linux VM in which the MySQL service is running, right? And the clients directly connect to it, talk to it, and the VM then talk to this storage layer, right? So uh, if you look at this picture, it is similar to, very similar, right? To uh, on uh, what you would have on a on a VM, on a uh, VM, I'm sorry, MySQL on a VM, but still it has all the advantages of being managed, right? When I say being managed, uh, take care of the backups, they take care of the uh, availability, they care, take care of uh, the security, all those things will be taken care of and you 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 can have a peace of mind that, okay, Microsoft is there to take care of your database. That is awesome. And I think my uh, my team of, you know, my peers and colleagues would be really, really excited by it and would love to try it out. Uh, actually, that reminds me, uh, do we have uh, any free trial um, offering uh, a free tier perhaps to try this out? Or what are the different tiers, uh, compute tiers do we, uh, that you offer uh, for Flexible Server? Yeah, again, great question, which people would always love to hear, right? right? Like, okay, uh, should I always invest the same amount of time for testing as well as for production? Uh, right or even if I just want to give it a try, can yeah. I give it a try with with lesser cost? Right. So uh, I would start up your question with first explaining you about uh, what are the SKUs which is available, okay. and then we we'll, we might go to the second part of the question at a later point of time. So based on power the computer tire, we are mm -hmm. separating it uh, into burstable, general purpose, and business critical. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the burstable are uh, suitable for like testing of hobby projects or development kind of a project, right? Where uh, the uh, your workload is not uh, requiring CPU continuously. So those kinds of a workload you generally use the burstable tire for. Now, if you come to the second, which is a general purpose tire, which is basically the business uh, workloads, right? Web apps, or if you have uh, like a uh, mobile apps or gaming apps, those those things are where uh, this particular thing will. Uh, be suitable for right uh, wherever you want to have a balanced compute and memory uh, usage right for your workloads right in those kinds of situation the general purpose would help now moving on to the business critical this is basically for the tire one workloads which require very high performance right or a real time processing for that matter so those kinds of uh, highly performant transactional or analytic workloads right mm -hmm. uh, we would always recommend you to move to a business critical tire right now, what is the difference between these? If you look at the VM series, is different. You can see like what yeah. VM series is supported. This number of cores which support is different, and the memory per week core is also different. Like depending upon uh, the compute tire, that is also different at, at right. And we currently support a, at a minimum of uh, 20 GB to 16 terabytes, and then uh, we also have plans to move up to uh, 100 terabytes. Okay. Right. Now, coming to your second question, I have not forgot about that for free. Right, okay. the free tire question, right? So, if, yeah. of course, we don't want customers to pay for, even if they want to give it a try. So, what we have is uh, the 12 months of Azure free account, right? Uh, I would say 70, 50 hours, uh, where a burstable tire instance, uh, one, one, uh, one week or instance can be created and you can use it for uh, 12 months uh, free of cost and you don't have to uh, uh, pay anything for it. You can try everything. Uh, most of the feature sets are available in the uh, burstable SKU. And then Another thing which I just missed telling you is that even in the previous uh, uh, tires, right, these uh, mm -hmm. uh, burstable general purpose, you can keep moving from one tire to another tire. It, it's not resting. Like today you are in burstable, you want to move to general purpose, you can do it to business critically. Yes, of course you can do it. Reverse is also possible. Okay, but this is amazing. I think uh, exactly you uh, you read my mind and answered every single one that I had a query on. Uh, I am really looking forward to trying this out right away today itself and also suggesting this to my peers. But I think the next question, once they try this out and get familiar, uh, is going to be, uh, you know, the real uh, the stuff about availability, uh, security, networking, compliance, uh, all these other to uh, topics are going to come on top of our mind. So shall we, uh, you know, I'd love to know a little bit more about each of these. 
Yeah, definitely. As we already spoke about previously, right? Availability performance, like no compromise, right? If yeah. for any customer, right? So uh, definitely, let me start with our commitments, right? Okay. Across SLA, right? Which can definitely put more questions in front of me, I know. Uh, but let me start with that, right? So uh, on a zone high availability option server or a server which has uh, zone written and high availability option, we give 99.99, the four nines SLA, right? If it is same zone HA, we give 99.95 uh, SLA. And on, on the server, which we don't have any redundancy, we give the three nines, that is 99.9 uh, is the SLA commitment we, we, we give to our customers, right? And so this is uh, the SLA commitment for it. So that actually tells you like how available it is or how, how assured we are that we will be able to provide this SLA for uh, you. Yeah, now I'm really curious what zone redundant, same zone, <laughs> and no redundancy means at the end of the day. So Expected, expected, right? So uh, let me start with uh, the same architecture which I showed you, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, everything is in one specific uh, zone, right, in this, and you uh, have, a, have a single server, right? So this doesn't mean that this does not have availability, because it definitely does not have availability. I cannot promise you three nines of SLAs, even for this uh, architecture, right? So what generally here happens is we discuss that uh, any anything happening in the data space is taken care of by the file storage because it has a three copies of it. If anything com happens to the compute, the compute will uh, be uh, another compute will be spun up and they will connect to the same uh, database files and will continue to uh, operate, right? So that way, uh, there is no downtime, right? Even in case of maintenance, which uh, maintenance nothing but uh, monthly security patching and uh, other uh, patching, which is required uh, whenever the community uh, uh, goes, uh, community edition goes for a change, uh, we actually have this minor version upgrade. So that's what the maintenance is, right? So th those, whenever this thing is done, so you will have a very small amount of downtime and these things comes up. But at the same time, it will make sure that if there is a major uh, thing which is happening to like kind of a VM struck kind of a scenario or any any problem in the uh, compute hardware, all these scenarios, still it will be able to support you uh, uh, the high so This is this this we will rather than calling it as a no not a known HA, I would call it as an inbuilt HA, right? It has an inbuilt HA mechanism, right? But right. this this was still not enough for customers because it requires some amount of time for the compute to come up and get connected, right? So uh, we uh, with for flexible server we came up with an another approach. Uh, not only that, the zone re uh, resiliency as well, right? When I say zone resiliency, mm -hmm. what if my one data center goes down? Can I operate my database without any changes from the client side? That is one of the requirements which was put forward for us uh, when we spoke about the legacy single server offering and when we moved to the flexible server offering. So that challenge we addressed this way, right? Having a standby server on a separate mm -hmm. zone, right? And then using the zone run and storage replication, we ship the logs from one zone to another zone and reapply to the standby server, which would mean at any point of time, the standby server has the same amount uh, of data, right? Or uh, the uh, uh, the data is uh, similar between these two things, right? Uh, we uh, and uh, here we use a zone redundant storage replication to replicate the files. It is reapplied uh, into the uh, standby server, and the standby server is always ready to take charge. So anything happens to zone one, the current primary will become uh, a standby, right? And uh, you can actually move to the uh, uh, the uh, zone two where your standby is in with very minimal uh, time. And, your, and it will apply any changes which is happening, which actually make sure that there is a very minimal data loss, or I would say that zero data loss scenario, because it's a semi synchronous replication which happens with storage replication and MySQL replication in between, right? So that way, it will make sure that everything uh, uh, is replicated and it, it, it will start up and the clients, because you are not changing the name of the server. This is a complete, what are you seeing? This uh, picture is a complete single entity, right? So the virtual name of the server is what you the clients will be connecting. So it seamlessly switches over to it, it right? Only thing what you would, if there is a failure, you require uh, your uh, uh, server to have a small uh, retry logic mechanism, which which would cop up the failure over time, right? So that's the only thing required. No change in connection string, nothing to be made. Application uh, is full free from it. The only thing is a little bit of retry logic and you, you would see the server coming up and running right yeah now we spoke about something called as 99.95 uh, with the same zone right same zone. so yeah that's a similar architecture of this right but the only difference you would see is the lock and redundancy 
is what will be used. The storage used here is not the ZRS storage, but or the zone written zone aware storage. Rather, we are we are using the local uh, aware storage. And the same thing happens. We have, but the only difference is both are in the same zone. Right, so that's why there's a small reduction in the uh, 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 SLA commitment there as well because uh, it doesn't addresses the yeah. same zone so architecture. Okay, yeah. So this will this will definitely uh, give you a clarity now on the intents in which we are putting uh, high availability in the top. Yeah, uh, this is uh, I mean this really clarifies. But now the next question comes: What if the region goes down? Uh, then what is the uh, disaster recovery or uh, business continuity that you offer there? That that's a very intelligent question, and I, I would say that uh, you are a DR champ as well. The way you have asked the question, uh, this this while uh, the zone architecture uh, or the ZRS architecture which we uh, spoke about, right? This architecture which you spoke about handles uh, the data center downtimes in a single region. When we are yeah. talking about the uh, uh, disaster recovery across regional failures, one of the feature uh, which is available along with our backup is a geo redundant backup. So what does that mean is whenever uh, you, uh, you create a server, you can select whether you want uh, the uh, zone redundant backup, local redundant backup, or geo redundant backup. If you have selected geo redundant backup, it gives uh, it it actually stores a copy of your backup on your uh, paired region, right? So every region has a pair attached to it. So on the paired region, we have a, a set of backup set which is saved and it gives you a facility to restore your server from that backup this is in extra to the uh, point in time restore right which actually uh, uh, help you to uh, address scenarios like uh, deletion accidental deletion of files or if you want to go back to a particular rolling snapshot back. Yeah. rolling yeah. back so those though, uh, in extra to that this is specifically for geo considering the uh, regional failover right so the other one uh, there is a feature in uh, uh, which actually uses the mysql native replication capability we call that as data in replication right where you can manage a read replica right and uh, you uh, uh, and you can synchronize the data like you initially dump the data uh, and then start synchronizing the changes or the change data capture keeps on happening uh, uh, from the uh, ma the uh, primary server to the replica server right and that way what would happen is any changes you are doing in the primary is replicated to it so there will be a replication lag but uh, that would be i would be that the replication drive will be approximately equal to the data loss which you could acquire right but uh, in a, in a scenario where uh, your workload is not that heavy you uh, you, you can almost uh, have like a lesser uh, rpu right and make sure that the server is ready now with this, the advantage is if at all a regional failure happens, you don't have to uh, uh, wait for the time to restore the your uh, backup, right? What you could just do is stop the replication and start using this server uh, to direct your application to this server, right? So that way it will uh, handle it. But data and replication is something customer managed, right? Mm -hmm. It is not a Microsoft managed solution. It's a custom managed solution. It uses the MySQL native replication. But okay. what, there's another uh, important uh, thing which I just want to share. We are coming with cross-region paired replica soon, right? Which actually okay. gives you a capability to do the same thing which you can do data and replication with Microsoft being managing your replica, Perfect. right? So yeah. that that's down the corner. So I will add one more uh, icon uh, to it when I speak to you next time, saying that there's one more solution for regional uh, uh, failures that that is you can use the cross region replicas paired replicas right that which means you can have a paired replica on a paired region so i mean to say that's, a replica on a paired region it's almost like uh, you know another hot standby in another region in a paired region altogether Correct. right uh, i think replication Correct. is definitely one of the most exciting things i have heard about in my sequel so far so uh, yeah this really clarifies and um, I feel co confident that you know I can uh, suggest this uh, to my customers um, as a reliant and available solution because so many options that I'm seeing and even without enabling HA, we do have that basic amount 99.9% .9 SLA. That's really good. Uh, this really helps a lot, uh, Sudesh. And now I think the next thing that comes to my mind is. Uh, security, right? Uh, how do how is networking? Um, is, is there a secure way to connect uh, to the server? Because in Azure SQL, what we have is uh, private links uh, or uh, even VNet integration. So, do we have similar things in MySQL? Yes, yes, and uh, that, that 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 that's again a, a, what you call as a high-profile question: security, right? Uh, okay. 
uh, see, uh, basically people are uh, more bothered about just after like availability performance, right? Uh, any enterprise customer or even for that matter, not only enterprise customers, other customers are also, since they are currently moving to cloud, they always have a fear, yeah. is my data secure, right? Exactly. So, uh, because it's not on my premises, I'm, I'm, I'm letting it out, uh, is this secure? So, the security is something which Microsoft uh, considered as the prime important or give high priority or high preference to anything which is happening in the security field and it do provide a lot of features uh, with respect to things. So initially, let me uh, explain you this networking options available like when i say networking option how you can connect to a flexible server right there are two ways to connect one is using the public access and the private access uh, the name itself is uh, very clear what it means but uh, generally when it is a public access you have a public endpoint a public ip uh, attached to your service and using that you will be able to connect from anywhere in the world using the internet traffic right uh, 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 and again does that mean that anybody can connect no Right. We have something called as firewall rules where you go and uh, give access uh, to those specific IPs which you really want to connect. So that way you are restricting at one level of uh, security or I would say the first gate uh, you are stopping uh, saying that, okay, you are not my known IP. I will not allow you to connect. Right. So that is uh, the IP firewall rules which actually governs. Now, if you come to the private access, it's still more secret because it gives a complete isolation about your network uh, uh, on your network, which means you are hosting your service on your VNet in Azure, right? And if any resources are allowed to touch that server or communicate that server, if they have access to that VNet, no, nobody else can do it. So no, uh, no public endpoint. You are completely secured, privately uh, within the Azure, within your VNet, right? Even VNet to VNet, unless until you peer, you are not able to yeah. communicate, right? And then you have NSGs, right? Uh, with the network security group rules, where you can set the rules and block and do all level of uh, restrictions uh, for other uh, thing to connect, right? And if your application is also on the VNet or on, I mean, on a di same VNet or a different VNet, right? Uh, you can actually make it so uh, 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 so isolated that you only these two guys talks, nobody else talk to the database at all. So that way, high level of uh, security in the uh, case of connection is what uh, it will it will uh, provide. Perfect. I think the uh, networking piece really uh, clear for me now. What about uh, security, like encryption? I'm assuming because the power of Azure and the security that comes with Azure, right? We have similar encryption uh, standards already set. And uh, how about, uh, you know, SSL and other uh, such encrypted connections? Very, very true. So this which she spoke about is just how you connect, right? But yeah. that is not going to make your uh, database uh, secure, right? Just uh, restricting the connect. There are, so basically, if you look at our uh, security compliance or privacy side, right? Uh, first and foremost thing is uh, where MySQL uses the FIPS 140-2 uh, validate cryptographic module uh, storage encryption for data at rest. Right. So anything, um, uh, any data which is addressed, like your uh, uh, your data files, your log files, everything which is addressed is being encrypted uh, by this uh, particular cryptographic al uh, algorithm. Right. Now, all backups are encrypted by AES 256-bit uh, algorithm. Uh, so they, they will make sure that uh, uh, this is again data at rest for that matter because the backup files are also there. So uh, the backup files cannot be accessed. This is what I said beyond connecting. There is a lot of things attached to the security. Uh, the next is uh, the manually middle attack, right? How can we prevent that, right? Is using the SSL encryption, right? Uh, whenever you connect, we recommend that you use uh, SSL with a TSL layer. We uh, sub support 1.2. We recommend rather 1.2 and above, though we, we can support lesser than if the MySQL is supporting lesser. And the commitment is if MySQL community stops supporting a particular uh, TLS protocol, we will also stop supporting that uh, from our end as well. So that way we are aligned with the community editions uh, as well, right? So that, that actually helps to make sure that uh, uh, no men in the middle attack is there and uh, can encrypt, uh, sorry, decrypt the connection. This is data in motion, right? This uh, particular uh, thing which I spoke about, right? And then, of course, which I told you, like uh, the uh, private access, how you can make it so isolated and get it integrated. So yeah. th these are uh, the way uh, we, we secure servers. I just wanted to add a few more things, which is uh, going to come soon, just like the private language uh, which I told you, which would be really interesting for you. 
right? Uh, one is the, the ability to bring your own key to encrypt the data at rest, right? That is, uh, we either call it as CMK or BYOK, right? Or customer yeah. managed key or bring your own key uh, and encrypt your uh, data, which uh, is one of the common uh, used uh, uh, or one, one of the common asked, I would say, uh, security from uh, most of our customers. So we, we are coming uh, with that soon, right? And another, th- one more thing which we are integrating is uh, on the AAD side, where we will integrate uh, uh, Azure AD authentication uh, with MySQL, uh, Azure database for MySQL uh, flexible server, which would help the customers uh, to uh, use the same AAD user uh, credentials for managing the user for user management in addition to the MySQL uh, uh, authentication. Okay, so currently we have MySQL authentication as the uh, authentication method, uh, right? Correct. But exciting Correct. stuff coming up, I think. Uh, I think right. with those two, uh, really in terms of security and networking, uh, I'm quite confident. But looking at compliance, that reminds me uh, another thing that at least uh, in the companies that uh, we all work for, uh, auditing is uh, taken very seriously. So do we have, uh, like we have in SQL, are we able to uh, pull out audit logs and uh, you know monitor them? Yeah, we we could we can easily do that with uh, Azure Database for uh, uh, MySQL, okay. right? So uh, we have an extension uh, developed by us, which actually audits all the DML DDL statements, right? And again, it's a configurable. You can decide what needs to be monitored. So for which you generally uh, go ahead and configure the server logs, uh, server parameters uh, for logging, which I told you, right? Uh, the one which is uh, 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 which I put on the left hand side, the audit logs you can see, right? So you can see which audit events, which audit users, right? What to exclude, right? Uh, and then uh, which will actually uh, uh, be written or transferred using diagonal settings into either storage or an event hub, or uh, you can even send it to the log analytics workspace. So uh, the, uh, whatever data is being there, it actually will get uploaded uh, to the uh, this this area based on the configuration you're done, right? Uh, it can be all of three or any one of the uh, uh, is also possible where you can say uh, like which one you wanted to select. Now, once you uh, push the data, then you can use the power of Azure Monitor, like uh, either use uh, the Event Hub's uh, thing or Log Analytics Query or read it from the storage, which will be just like an, uh, a normal uh, security file, which can open and read from the storage. So all these three things are possible. And this way you will be able to uh, set the auditing. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, any, if you wanted to uh, you, uh, means, uh, check on the audit logs, because most of our uh, like uh, financial customers are, are uh, very much keen toward this, making sure that they want auditing uh, to be enabled for any kind of database activities is happening for their yeah. uh, 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 like uh, later rate, later analysis and other stuff, right? So uh, that can be done. Yes, you can do that uh, with audit logs. Perfect. Now, uh, I saw Azure Monitor, so I, I'm sorry for randomizing you, but I see Azure Monitor and I'm thinking uh, that is another amazing feature that we uh, use with Azure SQL, just the power of Azure Monitor to monitor um, the performance and tune it accordingly. You know, we usually use Azure Monitor to look at how the performance is going and then scale up or down accordingly. Uh, do we have similar uh, monitors, uh, metrics and workbooks uh, support for MySQL as well? Of course, we will have to, right? Because the story never completes when you create, yeah, performance. connect, <laughs> right? Uh, you are, you are, you have created your server. You have, uh, you are uh, connected to your server. You have managed your server. Now you also need to monitor your okay. server. Yes, Microsoft will do the management bit of it, right? But that yeah. doesn't stops you from understanding or taking calls uh, on how your server is performing. Even to take a call, whether you need to scale up or scale down, right? You should know uh, what really is happening on your server, right? So the, uh, first of all, uh, the uh, uh, Datadog, PMM, which are the monitoring tools, we are compatible with them, right? And Perfect. you can have uh, Azure Database for MySQL, uh, uh, do uh, means uh, inter- uh, integrate uh, integrate with them, but that is not the only thing which you are providing. We use the Azure Monitor power, right? I would say that we use the p- power of Azure Monitor to display uh, the uh, or, or monitor means show you the monitoring metrics, right? So whatever you see on this uh, slide, right, are the metrics, logs, or workbooks for that matter. Everything is a part of uh, Azure Monitor. So we emit the data 
and use the power of uh, Azure Monitor to display it in front of you. So when I say metrics, it is uh, it's more like the counters, whichever you say, like in case of CPU usage, uh, memory usage, etc., which you can go select the counter and you'll be able to see what really is happening, right? Now come to log analytics. We spoke about sending the data, like audit logs, or even for that matter, the slow query logs or uh, even metrics as into the log analytic workspace, right? And then if you want to query it from the log analytic workspace, that's where the logs would be helpful, right? Now, uh, the uh, third thing which is uh, written is workbooks. Uh, workbooks is nothing but another uh, uh, strong tool of uh, Azure Monitor where uh, it, it actually will help you to query data from multiple data sources and then uh, bring it uh, into uh, one, uh, when I say one, uh, it will help you to bring into one particular dashboard, a single pane glass experience where you will be able to see everything together, right? Like when I say you can see the log, log analytics query also in the same page, you can also see the metrics in the same page, you can even query about the database status in the same page, you can query the databases in this, uh, the, uh, the list of databases in the thing and put it all together so that it kinds of a single dashboard to operate, right? And even for that, we have provided provided uh, three different uh, uh, templates which actually help you uh, that you do not have to design the template you can just go ahead and use a template right so that that actually uh, so which which means it's a ready made thing which is available for you click on it and you will be able to uh, see the, uh, the counters uh, the queries which is coming in and generally we have an overview which talks about all the basic counters we have another one for auditing which talks about the auditing data which is being collected another very important thing which customers have been asking for us is the query performance inside which talks to you about what are the top five queries which took time right what is the uh, load on the server right over a period of time all those things are uh, already ready-made available which you can easily monitor using the workbooks and not uh, like any other Azure resources, of course, resource health at another point where you can look at the health of the service, activity logs to look what who is doing what activity on the service, right? And you can even configure alerts, right? Uh, so that if like, suppose if your CPU goes beyond it, you can get an SMS on an alert. So that is what the alerts means here. So all these features are available, right? Uh, as I told you, like if uh, if we get into it, we, we, can, we can talk for hours and uh, go each feature in detail. No, this is perfect, Sudesh. Uh, and this gives me a really good, uh, you know, overall understanding of what uh, Azure Database for MySQL um, has to offer. Uh, and I think my database administrator friends would be really satisfied with these data points. I'm going to share them exactly as I heard them today. But uh, I've got another set of peers who are developers. So uh, I want to understand how easy is it for them to integrate with uh, MySQL, uh, Azure Database for MySQL. Like I know you mentioned earlier that it is seamless and it's uh, you know uh, easy to integrate with the ecosystem, but I want to hear a little bit more uh, on that, uh, Sudesh. Yeah, that bit of the story is I'm not going to leave it, right? Whatever we have been discussing so far is for them, right? Whatever we discussed so far, uh, it's actually uh, reducing the load of the administrators and help developers to make sure that they are uh, they are tension free. I would say, as you said, right, uh, uh, thinking about what would happen to a database and then concentrate on the development bit of it, right? Exactly. So, uh, to start with, uh, the uh, good thing with Azure Database for MySQL uh, flexible server, right? Any development pool, pool for that matter, whichever works in the open source uh, space, right? Like GitHub, MySQL command line, or uh, MySQL Workbench, right? Uh, or Visual Studio Code for that matter. You can use any of these uh, uh, deployment tools even with Azure Database for MySQL, right? There is nothing like, okay, we need to use only this tool for uh, Azure Database for MySQL. It's compatible with all those tools. Same is the case with the programming languages and the frameworks, right? Uh, right? Like WordPress or uh, uh, if you think about Python, uh, Java, right? Whatever you can see in this uh, thing. It is compatible, right, and, and easy to operate as well. That that is one of the things which uh, uh, makes the developers happy, right? Now coming back to this particular part, right? Uh, we spoke about uh, the open source world, how it is uh, very much linked with Azure Database for MySQL. Now about the Azure ecosystem, right? So let's let's say app service for that matter. You wanted to create a WordPress app. Right, or let's say a website, uh, which which would be in a web app plus a database. Right, the currently the integration is so uh, easy. Right, that uh, if you just go through the things automatically, like for example, let's say WordPress. Right, uh, it will automatically it will create a flexible server and a database for you and host it. Right, with 
very minimal clicks i would say right uh, uh, like uh, you you don't have to do too much of activities of integrating it creating a database writing connection string doing all those things seamlessly integrate with you right we definitely would have uh, demos on these things which will uh, definitely help in the other sessions uh, which i'll share with you uh, later but okay. uh, th- this this is really uh, uh, because uh, the reason i'm uh, uh, pitching that up is the moment you see you will understand how easy it is to create right as compared to when on an on prem you will first create an apache service then you will have a database then you will have to go edit the configuration files like if you start talking about it and there is a lot of places where you can get into errors right and you'll start troubleshooting wasting time on that right so those things are taken out now coming to azure kubernetes service right uh, that, that's also another uh, thing in the ecosystem which which is which uh, for our microservices uh, uh, part of it right that's also very easy to integrate you can easily integrate with the azure uh, kubernetes services uh, the azure database for mysql right or if you are having uh, like workloads uh, which is running on azure linux uh, azure uh, linux vms or windows vms you can do uh, similarly with ads synapse analytics or devops if any of these services you can easily integrate uh, 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 the mysql data means uh, database is a backend database uh, with uh, which is very seamless i would say right and uh, um, like like we, i i've been always telling easy to operate and uh, easy to use right so yeah. both the things uh, are there even uh, in this ecosystem so this also makes the solutioning part of it uh, so not only developers even architectures are happy with this right this is really exciting sudesh i think the last uh, one thing that is on top of my mind is migration uh, because i am totally convinced that uh, you know using mysql flexible server is going to help my mysql users so uh, how do we migrate to mysql uh, azure database for mysql yeah so i'll i'll take that question and divide it into two one is how and first is the migration path right so mm-hmm. basically uh, as uh, you can see in this picture like uh, uh, from from multiple resource or a hybrid uh, different multi crowd resources you are able to come back to uh, come to the flexible server right the good thing with how is uh, the all the open source database tools which actually works in community edition right or on your on prem right it actually works Uh, with uh, the uh, azure database for mysql as well as we already spoke about the other tools right uh, they like for example mysql dumper right or even the export import using mysql workbench right which is a very common tool which people use it right or php admin uh, the normal mysql dump which is there with the mysql tools all these can be used and uh, 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 means used to uh, migrate the data from uh, any of these sources into azure right Uh, we also have database migration service which actually supports uh, the migration of our databases uh, not only our database any 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 databases in azure right so uh, as a part of that service we also have mysql service where you can select the source destination and start migrating the data all right uh, if you are looking for a near zero time migration uh, we, we spoke about this data in replication before right yeah. for, for the regional uh, this, uh, the uh, addressing the regional scenario we can use the same thing here for migration as well where you initially dump the data using mysql uh, dumper or mysql dump and then from that consistent state we'll uh, start uh, 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 replicating the changes using the data in replication and then um, uh, whenever we have uh, the data uh, in sync then we decide on the cutover and then cutover yeah. from the source database to the target database and then direct the traffic uh, of application to the uh, uh, database perfect thank you so much sudesh and uh, this is really exciting i'm glad that you know azure dms that we are uh, uh, used to is also uh, uh, compatible here and again my favorite uh, new favorite thing replication is here so uh, i am going to uh, definitely explore and share these uh, with my uh, peers but do you have a few links to resources that i could perhaps uh, share um, across yeah of course uh, let me share that uh, with you these are the resources which you can go we have our uh documentation uh you, uh you you have our videos blogs everything on these uh, links which are is being shared you also uh, have a details on how you can connect with us as well perfect this is uh, this is great and i'm looking forward to um, you know uh, getting started with the free account as well uh, so uh, thank you so much sudesh uh, and uh, and i heard you mention there are a couple of other sessions uh, in which we're talking about mysql in dps 
Yeah, definitely. Because there are uh, a lot of sections which our team is presenting in DPS. I would like, uh, I would uh, rather recommend everyone to go ahead and you uh, once listen to these uh, sessions because it, th- this takes you in depth, right? Whatever we have yeah. discussed is in general feature, right? This takes you in depth on each of these uh, things uh, which have been discussed and give you a better clarity of uh, whatever service can provide you. Perfect. There's uh, so many different types of topics, interesting uh, topics for my database friends, ad- administrator friends, my developer friends, and also people who are just looking to understand how to automate, uh, you know, uh, provisioning MySQL flexible server, etc. So uh, I will definitely share these and I will myself take part in most of these sessions. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, staying in touch. Thank you yep. so much, Sudish, for your time today. And, uh, you know, this is really valuable. And I think uh, I'm I'm completely for uh, Azure Database for MySQL Flexible Server uh, right now. Yeah, Re- really, really happy to hear that. And thanks to you, Shriya, for asking great questions, right? Thank Intelligent you. questions, right? <laughs> thanks so much, Sudish. And uh, 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 team, that, that ends our uh, role play. Uh, but we are here in the chat section for the next couple of minutes. So uh, feel free to put down your questions uh, and we will uh, uh, converse over the chat window. Thank you so much, Sudish, and thanks everybody for listening. Uh, I really hope that you uh, try our service out and uh, go through our documentation, our videos, and uh, stay tuned uh, through social media. Thank you. Thank you.